up with snow in the forecast coming up here. Well, at least from where I live, if you're snowed in, don't worry. You have me to look forward to. Doesn't matter when you're watching. It matters if you're watching Time Room Sports Show right here, episode number 29. Kind of hard to believe I've been doing it for that long. I say that way too many times. It's been over six months once again. Trivia question, here we go. Who holds the record for most Super Bowl MVPs? Got your answer? Well, if it's kind of obvious that arguably the greatest quarterback of all time has it, Tom Brady, four times Super Bowl 36, Super Bowl 38, Super Bowl 49, and Super Bowl 51. With, of course, four, with of course those four Super Bowls being some of the best Super Bowls of all time. High school basketball is what we need to look at because it's always fun to cover high school basketball. While the boys' scores may look like they're cut off by a little, don't worry, I have you covered. So here's what it says. Highland took down Aurora last Friday night. By the way, all of these games are on last Friday night. Highland took down Aurora 86-76 in overtime. Alex had 37 points, which was absolutely crazy. And I believe Bryce put up 24. By the way, Bryce is a receiver at Akron University. That's right. He's going to a Division I school. So... For a Highland kid like me, as we're all aware of here, I'm kind of excited for it. And of course, when Highland plays Bowling Green, you got Jake Rogers representing Bowling Green, Bryce Prophet representing Akron. I don't know who to go with. I probably will go with Akron because I take um, CCP classes there. So I have to talk about that. That really excites me as an Akron student and uh, Kid at Highland, <laughs> we're good friends. He's a great guy, and congrats to him. I know I mentioned that a lot, but Talmadge Copley, Talmadge won 61-45. East was able to take down Barberton 84-73. Revere beat Roosevelt 62-48, and we see Hudson taking down the Cuyahoga Falls Tig or Black Tigers 59-41, as in. The infamous PlayStation 4 video game, Life of Black Tiger. <laughs> Brexville beat Nordonia 58-28. Stowe beat Twinsburg 50-48. And North Royalton beat Wadsworth 57-41. North Royalton, who's been having their struggles lately, definitely got that big win. Girls scores because, of course, we look at that often from last Saturday. Of course, games will be going tonight. I am covering the game against Talmadge, I will be pep banding and announcing two things at once. If I if it was a success when we played Roosevelt, I think it will be a success here. Cloverleaf beat Roosevelt 62-45. Copley took down out at 61-28. Green beat Barberton 43-39. Wildenville beat Revere 60-50. Highland took down Northwestern 60-28. Talmadge beat Cuyahoga Falls. 46-31. Twinsburg was able to take down Aurora, 62-44. Brexville with a big win over Valley Forge, 51-48. Chagrin Falls with a win over Hudson, 38-36. And Stowe takes down Jackson, 65-43. So, of course, we need to look right there for what to look for for Friday. And Wednesday, this will probably be probably be the last time we do this because the uh, high school basketball seasons are unfortunately coming to an end soon. North Royalton has really wrapped up that national conference, yet Twinsburg is looking to finish the season strong for boys basketball. And Revere, pff, they got the American Conference in hand. For girls basketball, a good game to look out for is Highland Talmadge because Highland is second seed and of course, Nordonia is number one seed, so those two schools doing a great job. Of course, Aurora has the American Conference in hand, so all Hornet games, including the playoff games, if they are able to beat in or their respective regions, well, yeah, if they're able to beat their respective regions, I don't know if I'll be able to cover those games, but I know that the regional playoffs will be right here at the Iowa Horn Sports Network. Of course, subscribe to us and follow us on Twitter. I made a new Twitter page for this YouTube channel. And now that that's done with, time to look at the Cavs. 
Yeah, of course, with player stats, Count Sexton with 19.7 points per game. Kevin Love, 17.7 points, 9.8 rebounds. Tristan Thompson, 11.8 points per game, 10.3 rebounds. And Seti Osman, 10.9 points per game. Big Trey, who I thought the Cavs would have done something. Andre Drummond, that's right, Andre Drummond. Right there, going to Cleveland. Traded from Detroit to Cleveland. Two big rivalries, I must say. Anyways, Pistons got Brandon Knight, John Henson, and the 2023 second round pick. Drummond leads the NBA with 15.8 rebounds per game. And had 17.8 points per game when he was in Detroit. The trade shows that the Pistons may have surrendered, sitting at a 19-36 and 36 record. Of course, Drummond may be their best player if it isn't. It's Boyd Griffin. Of course, Boyd Griffin is now the best player. But at the time, he was there with Andre Drummond. And it was a big steal for the Cavs, getting yet another big player. So you have Count Sexton, you have Kevin Love, Tristan Thompson, Andre Drummond. Heck, I'd even say Darius Garland, too. So a nice, solid five. And hopefully this can show a turnaround. Cavs aren't that bad of a team. It's just that they, you know, kind of struggle. Yeah, again, Count Sexton is going to the Rising Stars Challenge in the NBA. That's right, NBA All-Star Game is coming up soon. I'm very excited for that. And then we'll get the recaps. Cavs against the Thunder. OKC, a surging OKC team on that one, 109-103. They're 31-20, and they're doing this without Russell Westbrook. Or 13-39. Dennis Schroeder with 30 points. Shy Gilgis Alexander with 23 points and 10 rebounds. Colin Sexton, 23 points. Kevin Love had 23, or Kevin Love had 20 points. John Henson had 10 points, 11 rebounds. And it was a close game through and through. Unfortunately, the Cavs were not able to win. As you can see the highlights. Of course, there's John Henson in what was his last game. Once again, he had a double-double in that 10 points, 11 rebounds. Well, did he know that he was on his way to Detroit when it was over. So, after we played a playoff Western Conference team with OKC, we played another Western Conference playoff team in LAC. That's right, Los Angeles Clippers, the mighty Los Angeles Clippers. It was here at The Rock, and we got whooped and died, annihilated. 133-92 was a fin finish. LAC went to 37-16. We went down 13-40. Lou Williams, a man who has really been showing himself worthy of being a starter after years of being a sixth man, 25 points. Paul George, 22 points. Six Clippers put up 10-plus points. That's right. Just goes to show how much teamwork that team has. That's more than a third of the team. But anyways, Andre Drummond, on a positive note, had 14 rebounds and 19 points. I guess that's not bad for... Our first game, albeit your team got killed. Kevin Porter Jr. had 17 points as he tries to show that he's doing good. And that was the worst loss in Cleveland Cavalier history. That's right, worst loss or home loss in Cavalier history. And this isn't just The Rock. I'm referring to the Cleveland Arena, the Richfield Coliseum, and The Rock. Both, the guy, or all three. The gun, the cue, the rock. That big of a loss. Really frustrating for the Cavs. And hopefully we can do something. Cavs are playing the Hawks tonight. I believe it will be our last game till the All-Star game. I'll try to do an All-Star game recap for you. Team Giannis against Team LeBron because Eastern Western Conference, who cares about that? What has happened to All-Star Games? I have no idea, but this one actually doesn't look that bad. But anyways, well, I was going to talk about something about the NHL, but I'm not talking about that. That's right, I'm not talking about that. Instead, I'm going off on, a, on an ad-libbed rant here about the MLB postseason. Now, in case you haven't heard, folks, they are trying to expand it from five teams to seven teams because, as we all know, 
how poorly received the five team wild card has worked. Why not do seven teams, says the MLB. And this is what it's like. The number one team gets off and numbers two and three get to pick. That's right, they get to pick in a reality show format. The reality format just got me lost. I'm like, oh no, you're not doing that. That is ridiculous. And this can happen in 2022. So for instance, say for like the American League, as I saw this in an article last year, Houston, because they spied on everybody, and guys like AJ Hinch and Carlos Beltran should never be allowed to manage or be in a baseball game again and not be in Cooperstown for spying. But because of what they did, they'll be off. They get a bye week or bye series. And then, so the Yankees are going to pick. That's right, the Yankees are going, or the Yankees, Twins, and the A's. So the Yankees have an option between the um, Rays, the Indians, and the Red Sox. That's right, they get to pick. And it's going to be on the day the regular season ends. In a reality show format, it's almost as if it's like the March Madness selection show, but even dumber, dumber. It's so stupid, the new format. Seven teams. Why not go back to the original four-team format? You and I'd be happy if we do a three-team format in the MLB, in which the top three winners in the division can make it, and the best one gets off, and then the next two only play, I don't know, maybe a three or five game series, I'll say, uh, or either one of those, and the baseball season will end quicker. So what happens is that the Yankees in the reality show format get to pick whoever they want, and then the Twins get to pick whoever they want, and then the other two wildcard teams battle it out. All of them in a three-game series. That's right, a three-game series, and all three games, all three home games are going to New York, Minnesota, and Chokeland. That's right, they're Chokeland in the postseason. But it's ridiculous because it's 100% unfair to the wild card teams. I mean, if you want them to win the division, don't make them get the playoffs at all then, okay? I mean, sure, it gets rid of the Cinderella run story like the 04 Red Sox and last year's Nationals, but you know what? You know what was before the um, 1969 expansion? Best team in the league gets to win or goes to the World Series. 1969-93, best team in the division. ALCS, no way LDS except for 1981 strike shorn season. I can't believe the MLB is going to do something like this. I can't believe this is coming out of the mouth of Rob Manfred. I mean, in case you don't know me, I love getting angry about sports and stuff, as you can tell. And mainly my targets will sometimes be the NBA, sometimes the NFL, definitely the NHL, almost never the MLB. I don't think I've got this upset. I used to be fine with Rob Manfred. I'm like, okay, he's so far doing a good job. This made me... Drive off the cliff. That's right, off the cliff. Absolutely ridiculous, 100%. Because three game format, all three teams are home. That'd be like, I don't know, in the 1962 National League tiebreaker between LA and San Francisco, rather than being Los Angeles, San Fran, Los Angeles, it'd be just all Los Angeles. Do you know how unfair that is to San Francisco? Do you know how unfair that is to the other teams, the wild cards, it's absolutely ridiculous. A three-team format, I don't care about the good ratings. Think of the players, think of the fans. I don't care about what TV says. I mean, I, I mean, we'd all do it, but still, come on, listen to what the customer is saying. A five wild card thing is not good. Go back to at least a four-team or at least a three-team I propose. Not some stupid reality show thing. Reality show. Yeah, that just gets everybody gone. I thought we're watching baseball, not MTV. What, yeah, speaking of MTV, 
We gonna put baseball on there? Why not? Sounds like a great idea. Someone ought to write a petition. You know what? I did just that. I wrote a petition today, which I'm going to give to Rob Manfred, and it is going to petition for the MLB to put the playoff format on MTV, and not just that, but speaking about games that are going to go faster, why not make two-hour shows during the playoffs about e all um, six games in the American League and National League? This is what the petition reads. It's, the headline is, Petition for the MLB to air playoff games on MTV. In honor of the playoff format, being a reality one, we believe that baseball games should not be on Fox, but MTV instead. More fights, controversies, dysfunction, and TVMA ratings will cancel ridiculousness, Jersey Shore, and Teen Mom, and all the other lousy spinoffs, and have new episodes every day. We'll stop local networks too, which include Fox Sports whatever, and have local MTV networks, i.e. MTV New York, MTV Boston. With this, baseball will feel less far away from us and more realistic. Sign below if you agree. 30 other people agree with this. I signed this. And look at the signatures right here. I am not joking. This is not me doing goofy stuff. These are all the signatures. <laughs> I'm actually serious. I made this today at about 1240 in less than two hours with me bugging people. Already 31 people have signed the petition. And maybe we will get MTV baseball. Because you know what they say, Nothing says reality like MTV. Such horrible shows. And such a god-awful playoff format. And dear Rob Manfred, do not do this. If you do, then do this. MLB on, once again, this episode has been brought to you by the MLB on MTV. Where baseball and reality collide. Yes. A lot of bad things gonna happen here in the MLB, isn't it? Time for my trivia question. My trivia question is, where will the OHSAA um, finals be for both boys and girls basketball? Like, not region, but the state finals. Got your answer? We'll be here next week. Till then, I'm Ty Maroon saying so long.